Okay. Well, I see a Danielle from California. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and introduce the project. Um, so today we're making a puffy star pendant. And how it's made is you create two pieces of Super Duo kind of star shaped bowls and stitch them together and then run a chain through it. And you can make any colors you like. Um, I have one here that I made this morning that's kind of a purple and copper. And I have one really fun design and some turquoise and purple and blue. Really nice colors. A solid blue on the back. So this is, it can be made reversible if you'd like. It can be on ball chain, it can be on leather, it can be on suede. And I actually brought up a few options I'll show you guys that I picked up when I was last at Michael's for stringing um, your, your pendant onto. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and switch down to my other camera so you guys can see more of the project. There we go. And so um, we are using Super Duo beads today. The pattern calls out for two colors, but you can do a solid color if you'd like. Here's a, what a solid color might look like. We also have size six seed beads that go on the side here. And then size 10 seed beads, and this is the turquoise label. And you'll need those for this part, which is this little space between the Super Duo beads. But to get started, all we need are just the Super Duo beads, some thread. I'm using the Wildfire 0.006. And I'm using a size 10 hard beading needle. Okay, so I'm just going to dive in. I will make um, this project two times. It's a quick make, so you'll get to see um, how it's made once, and we'll go through it one more time. Just getting the cap off that. There we go. Okay. So starting with that color. And there is a class handout, and in that handout it says to cut about 36 inches of thread. You'll be able to make both sides of the pendant with that 36 inches. To cut my thread, I'm using precision scissors. You can use um, you know, whatever you guys have on hand, thread snips or your favorite. Even embroidery scissors would work. This thread is pretty easy to cut. And again, these are size 10 hard beading needles. And I wanted to say also, if you have size 12s and want to try it, feel free to try a size 12 needle. If you can get it threaded easily, um, it works great through Super Duos. And what I'm doing right now is I'm flattening the end of the wildfire thread so that it's easier to get it through the needle. Go ahead and thread it. And it makes it a lot easier to thread if you flatten it. I pull it down about seven inches or so. Fold over. And this is worked on a single strand. I'm going to leave about a seven inch tail. So Hopefully about the width of my bead mat there, the height of my bead mat, sorry. And I'm going to pick up five Super Duo beads. Okay. So starting with five, bring those down to about seven inches from the bottom of the thread. And now go back through all five of those in the same, the same hole that your thread is currently going through. And go ahead and pull the needle through, all, all the thread through, and you'll notice that when you do that, it will almost close, but not quite. See how it's kind of, so it helps to get it to form a circle. Go through one more bead. Okay. There we go. And now when you pull, it should make, it looks a lot like a little star shape. So now the next thing I'm going to do is just go through all of these beads again and exit the same place that I'm exiting now. 
And that's just to give it tension and tighten it up. So I'm going to go through as many as it'll let me. I just went through two. Two beads there. And the next one. One more. And now I want to go through the one that the tail is exiting. Okay, I'm going to pull here so that I'm pulling on the tail on the working thread so that it's nice and tight. Okay, and so the next step is to turn and go through the top hole of the super duo that your working thread is exiting from. So turn and go through that top hole. And I'm usually, I'm not pulling too tightly for that because I don't want to warp the work I did over here. So I just gently did that. And now I'm going to pick up two new super duos and go through the top hole of that next super duo. I'm going to get the tail out of the way. This is my tail thread I'm pulling down here just so you see that. Okay, so there's two super duos. Went through the top hole of the next super duo. I'm going to repeat that all the way around. I'll pick up two more. And go through the next top hole. And if they try to spin like that, just help them so that they sit in a V shape. And two more. Mm -hmm. Two more here. And these are the last two. So now I'm going to go through the top hole of that last super duo, but I'm going to continue through the next one, which is the bottom hole of that first one we added in this row. So you can see where I'm exiting here. I'm going to go through a few more just to make sure that it's tight. So I just went through the next three. Let me go through those. And I feel like it's sturdy enough. I'll go ahead and add the next row. If you feel like these are loose, you can go all, over, all the way around again. But I find that what's actually loose is just the first ones that I added. So I go through one, maybe the next set, and it's usually fine. Also, I'm exiting in between one of the Vs of the two that were added and not in between. If you can see the geometry here, there's this open V versus this little gap. I'm exiting from one of the open V's, and I'm going to turn and go through the top hole. It's not essential that you exit from there, but I think it's easier to go do the next step this way, so you can remember how many to add. So um, for this next step, we're going to put, the, there's going to be a, a variation of one, two, one, two, all the way around. The twos are going to go in the V, I believe. And uh, I'm going to just double check over here and make sure I've got that right. But let me show you. So the, the two new ones are going to go in the Vs. So you have these Vs stacked, and then the single is going to go in between them. And I'll show you what I mean here. OK, so here's my new color. And I'm exiting from one of the Vs and at the, one of the in-between places. So I'm just going to add one. Go through this next one here. Now I'm going to pick up two. And go through the next hole. And so we're just going to continue that pattern all the way around. So this next is one, just one super duo. And then two more. And 
mind. And two more here. These are really gorgeous colors. This is like a matte copper and a matte purple. Two, and then one. And I just got two more to go after that. I got two here. Okay, so now I'm going back through my original. This is that original one I started. I'm gonna continue and go through a few more beads. And that's just to tighten it up a little bit. And at this point, it's not really essential, but if you feel like going through a few more, I feel like it helps stabilize the work a little bit. Okay, so I'm exiting from inside one of these beads. I'm gonna turn and go through the top hole. Okay, and so now we're going to start adding beads. And the way this is built is you're going to put a large size six seed bead in between each of the beads. And in between each of the little spokes here, there's just going to be a size 10 seed bead. If you're uh, using 11s, if you don't have the 10s handy, I believe that'll work too. It'll be tighter. You'll have a, um, what happens when you make this stitch next? is it forms a bowl shape like this. You see how it starts to tighten and make like a little bowl. That happens at this step when we start to make the small beads connect. It just brings it up. If you're using 11s, it's really gonna dome. But I think it'll work. So if that's what you have handy, try it. But um, the, tens are, the tens are what I'm using here. And here's my sixes. I'm using a mix called Amber. It's my favorite mix. That's this one. All right, so I'm exiting from one that is next to a V. So the, the six I was gonna go here, so I'm gonna add a 10. That's my next bead in the line here. So I'll add a 10. And now's the time when we're gonna start using a little more tension. Not like really making it tight, but just, just enough that you start to see that bowl shape begin to form. Kind of purplish bead here. This is a six, and this is one of the V's. So we're putting a six into one of the V's. And two more tens. So a ten here, a single ten here, and a single ten in the next space. So the pattern is six, ten, ten, six, ten, ten, all the way around. Here's that one. Oops. There we go. Another 10. So see what's happening? It's starting to get, to make it kind of a 3D, I guess, shape there. And what we're gonna do at the next step, just in case there's anyone working and they've gotten around already, we're gonna go through again, the whole thing all the way around to really make that dome pop. Okay, another six. And a few more tens here. Okay, and I'm to my last six, I'll find this nice purple one. Now I'm gonna go through as many as it'll let me. Just, I'm just going through all these beads here. And watch what happens when we do that. Now it's really making a bowl. You can see it more from the side. Oops. 
Okay, I'm gonna throw all those. <clears throat> Go through the next ones. And the way to remember, so you know when you've gotten back to the first one, if you're like me and I, I always lose count, you'll be able to see on the side of your six that there's just a single strand versus two. And when you see two there, you know you made it all the way around. Okay, going through that one. And yeah, let's see. Have two there? Have two there, okay. So go through one more and it'll start to get tight. See how it's, I've got to work a little harder to get that through. I'm going to exit from that six. And now I'm going to knot. Yes, I'm going to knot, guys. But it's only because there's just not a lot of real estate to weave into and it's such a quick make that if I had to remake it for some reason, I could do that. But normally I would, I would prefer weaving it and it's just for this one. I exited from a super duo and then I went with my needle underneath all the threads that are in between the super duo and the next 10. And I'm gonna pull through until I have a loop. I'm gonna go through that loop. That's a half inch knot, I tied one. I'm going to go through the next 10 and then through the next super duo bead and try to exit just outside that next super duo. So like that. All right, I'm going to do the same thing again. I went under the thread that's in between that super duo and the 10. Pull until I have a small loop, go through that loop, pull tight. So there's two half inch knots. If you want, you can do three. You can do another one here at the outside of that super duo, but <clears throat> it's actually pretty good. I feel like it works. So I'm going to trim that and set that one aside. And then I'm going to grab another needle and I'm going to thread this tail thread. Here's our tail thread from when we made step one, <clears throat> that first five, you know, super duo beads. What I want to do is weave that one in. And in order to do that, I'm gonna bring it out to the side. So I'm gonna flatten it here. Okay, so flattening the edge of the wildfire, that's what I'm doing there. Getting it through the needle. Pull, hold over. Okay. And kind of paying attention to where it's exiting. It's exiting here and it's headed in that direction. So I'm gonna keep going through there. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna try to go through these two, if it'll let me. If not, nope, there it goes. If not, I would do that one by one, but go through one more here. There we go, I went through one more super duo. And I'm gonna turn, change directions, go through the top hole of that same super duo. You see what I'm doing is I'm weaving down because I wanna exit the same spot. There we go. And if it's one of the ones you already have a knot in, you will not go through. So if you reach that, go through the next one. There you go. And actually, you know, you could just trim it right here. I just want to show in case anyone wants to see how to get down there for that knot. I went through one too many there. I'd like to go through just that copper one. All right. So you see the work's getting pretty tight, but that's good because that means it's holding its shape really nicely. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to turn and go through the top hole of that same super duo, this copper one here. See so through the, the top hole there. And same thing as before, we're just gonna come underneath, make a knot, and you guys get the idea. Now it's all set. Okay, go through the next 10. And I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it because it was a lot of weaving in and a good half hitch knot there and I feel like that will do it. So there we go. Side one is finished. 
We're going to set this aside for now. And we're going to make one more section that looks like that. And this is a chance to get to see um, steps one through, I think it's three, steps one through three again. So I'm going to pick up five super duos here. Pull down seven inch tail or so. Go back through the first super duo bead. And pull. Until I get a star shape. And now go through all those beads again. Going through the lower hole, the same hole that the current thread is going through. Okay. And one more. All right. So that's a pretty solid star shape. I'm going to turn and go through the top hole of the bead that my thread is exiting. Okay. And now pick up two more, two new super duo beads, and go through the next top hole. And just kind of move that tail thread out of the way there. Okay. Let me pick up two more. Yeah, so this second row is just two in between each of the V's. And now I'm going to keep going through the next super duo bead. Let me get the tail out of the way. And go through a few more just to tighten it up a little bit. Okay. All right, so exiting from the bottom hole of one of the Vs, the super duos here, I'm going to turn and go through the top hole of that same super duo. Now I'm in the right spot to add the next one. So just like before, we're going to put a V where a V is and a single super duo where there's not, not a V. So there's one. Now I'm going to add two more. Seems like everybody's getting it. No questions yet that I've seen. Okay, through the next one here, just adding one. You guys see that gold bead? He keeps walking over. He's like, I want to go in there. We've all used gold this time. Okay. Oops, there's a type right there. One. Going to add two more. Oh, um, so I'm not actually securing the center. I'm leaving it loose right now. I just went through all the beads twice. So the center is just a loose tail right now. And we'll weave it in before we connect the two pieces. You could if you wanted to. You could weave it in a step ago. Um, that would be totally great to do, actually. I'm always too excited to make the first, you know, section. OK. Okay. 
one more. And the last two. Okay, so with the last two, keep going through all three of those, even the fourth one. So I'm going through the next four super duos here in a row as they stack. I think I'll go through a few more because it is a little bit loose. Okay, so there we are. And that is all you really have to do for this part. I'm going to thread a needle now on this tail, the tail thread for this piece, and weave it in. But I'm not going to weave in this other working thread that we were just using, because we're going to use that to connect the two pieces. So there, I'm just threading. I flatten the wildfire, get it to go through. OK. All right, so just paying attention to where it's exiting and what direction I'm headed. I'm going to go through the next bead here. I'm going to turn, go through the next few. There's no set way to do this. Just kind of weave around however you want to, just wherever it lets you weave to. The super duos do, they, they tend to get tight after a couple passes. So I'm going to exit from here. And I don't have any seed beads right now. I've just got super duos, but I know for my next steps that I don't have to go through these bottom holes again. I know I'm good for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a half hitch knot in between one of these beads. So just whenever you're going to knot, just be cognizant of, am I going to need to get another thread pass through there? And if the answer is, I don't know, I'm not there. <laughs> if you're pretty sure that you're done with this part, then you can do some knotting. So I'm going to do a knot. I did one there, and I'm going to do one more. I'm going under the thread that's passing between those two beads, going through the loop, and then just pulling. So now I'm going to go through one more bead, and I'm going to trim this tail. And that should do it. OK, my tail's gone. And so now the really fun part. Okay, so you're gonna, no more super duos are needed. You're gonna need size tens and size sixes and both pieces that you made. So starting with, I'm exiting this bottom hole. I'm gonna turn and go through top hole. And now I'm gonna pick up a 10 and go through the next 10. Sorry, I guess I'm going to get these out of the way a little bit. Okay, and pick up another ton and go through that. Okay, so normally I would pick up a six here and go through that, but I'm going to borrow the six on my other side. So go through that six. And now go through the top hole of that super duo, the next one in the V. And so it should form kind of a little lid, I guess you could say, like, it's like a little lid. And so now I'm going to pick up another 10 and go through the next one here. And one more 10. And at this point, I need to connect that six with this B. So to do that, I'm going to have to fold it over now. And so from here on out, we're going to be working with it kind of sandwiched a little bit. So go through this next one, the next six, sorry. And then through the top hole, uh, the next super duo in that V. It looks like I might have crossed my thread a little bit there. There we go. So exiting that six and now going through the top hole of the next super duo there. 
and you'll see it start to, it'll foam, form its own do dome shape as we go around. So I'm picking up another pen, going through the next super duo. One more time. Go through the next super duo. Now go through that six. And through the next super duo. Another 10. One more 10. And through the six. Next super duo. Okay. And then just two more tens here. One here. And through the next. Okay. Then through the six. And we're going to go through this next one here and we're going to go all the way around. Before I do that, I'm going to come back out of the six. I wanted to show you guys something really quick. So what are you going to use for your chain? If you're going to use something that does not easily maneuver, go ahead and put your chain on before we seal it up. If you're going to use ball chain, don't worry about it. I've had no trouble getting ball chain through. Um, show you what I mean here the, on this one. What I do is I just kind of bunch the ball chain in there until I see it. And then I use some needle nose pliers or chain nose pliers to pull them out. Um, but if you don't want to deal with that or you're, you know, using something thick, um, and some examples of something thick would be like this. When I made this one, I put the, the lace in before I sealed it because the suede is really thick. And so getting it through was, you could, I mean, if you sealed it up, you could probably still get that through, but it's just good to think about some other options. The ball chain I'm using is right here. It's, it's bead landing, you know, I think it's, oh, it just, there's no dimensioning on it, but it, you know, it looks like a one millimeter kind of ball there. So here's another option you could try. It's just leather cord. It already comes with a clasp on it. My thinking on the clasp is, hey, I gotta get through that, that clasp. So I gotta get the clasp through this, that might not, be easy to do. So in that case, I will go ahead and I think I'm going to show you guys that actually. Let's open this up really quick. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put this through here. And I'm going to pick up the six, go through that six. Now I'm going to go through the next super duo bead and continue through as many of those tens and super duos as I can. In this case, I was able to get through all of them. I'm go ahead and pull. And there you go. So it's almost done. I've got the chain in there. Don't have to worry about putting that in later. The leather in this case. And now I'm going to just tighten it up. I'm going to go through the six. So you see, he's, it's loose right there. The super duo is not connecting tightly, but it'll tighten up a lot on one more pass. Let's go through once more. And that's all. I'll go through here. So I just went through all the beads in that row. So the super duos, the tens, going through the six here. And I don't know how easy it is to see, but it's very tight now. It's almost hard to, to, to tell apart which side I did first. So that's great. That's what we want. Let me go through this one more time. And then we're through there. Okay, and now we're back where we started. So now just pick one. Weave through whichever one you think looks looser. I feel like this side could use another pass. I'm gonna go through those first two. And I'm just gonna do that same thing that I did before with a half hitch knot. So underneath. 
find a loop. And pull. Go through the next beads here. I went through the 10, the super duo, and the six. I'm gonna keep going. Go through another super duo here. Okay. And another knot. I'll probably do one more knot because this is a kind of important spot. Okay, through exiting from another super duo here. Pick up that thread. One more knot. All right, so go through the six scissors, pushing down with the scissor, pulling up with the thread. Turn. Oh, very easy. That's something that um, I thought of after I made the first one was if you had like a beach rock or something, it could, you wouldn't be able to see it, but you could hide like a little totem in there. And as long as it's large enough not to fall through these kind of side holes, it could be carried around with you. My son brings me lots of little rocks, so I thought, well, I'll put one of his rocks in there. So I do have another piece ready to go. Um, I figured this would be a great time for questions and then I'll go through sealing it one more time. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we will we'll answer them for you. But I'm gonna get started. I'll do this one on ball chain so you guys can see that. So here's where we left off before um, we had a tail we needed to weave in and we finished uh, those first three rows. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread this one on a needle. This is my tail thread from my second side. Hi, Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey! I just want to let you know that your class is really um, following along and there aren't as many questions. So your instructions are clearly making sense and they are noticing it does look like a snowflake. So we have enough time and one or two people would love it if you would do what you're doing right now, which is to show it one more time. Great, I think yeah. So the, the joining the two pieces is probably the hardest part. So thank you. Yeah, great. So I, I'll go through that really quick here. So I've got, um, I've got, this is my tail thread. It's exiting from this, the, that first center, you know, set of five that we made. And so I'm just gonna go through another bead. And then I'm going to turn and go through the top hole of that same bead, maybe continue through the next. And keep going there. And I'm going to turn and go through this row. So see I'm turning and going through that top hole. And then, as I was saying in the last one, I know I won't need to get a needle through this connection area anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and knot in these places by going underneath the thread, coming through a loop, pull tight, and go through a few more super duos. I'm kind of nodding at the base ones, not on the Vs, if that makes any sense, just because they're, they tend to be more sturdy. Go through there. Go through one more. And then I'm going to trim this tail. There you go. Okay. And so coming back to my working thread, the tail's gone. We wove that in. I'm exiting from the last, the you know the 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 hole that's on the inside ring here of the last super duo bead that we strung. I'm going to turn and go through the top hole of that bead. So that puts me out in the outside row. And the pattern down here is 10, 10, 6, 10, 10, 6. And we're going to borrow the 6 from the first side. So I'll pick up a 10 here. And I'll pick up another 10. Go through this way. And now I'm going to use the six from the lid. Let's go through that one. And 
and then go through the top hole of the next super duo in that V shape. Just going through that one. And now they're, now they're connected. So I'm going to go through, add one more ton here. So now I'm just continuing around. Go through this way. Okay, so now the next one I want to connect is this six. So I'll go through that direction. And when I do that, it's going to go ahead and pull it closed on that side. And I'll go through the next super duo. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. I've got those two V's. I'm now sharing that same six. And yeah, these are um, these are round six C's, so six C beads. Okay, I'm adding a ten. You know, and as I'm working through these, going through the next six here, I started to think of, well, what if I tried this or that? Um, and I saw a question of, oh, can I try this bead? say, yeah, definitely try every idea you have because that's, you know, that's how these things are. That's how you come up with this stuff. And I had no idea what I was doing. When I first made this, I had a different idea in mind entirely and it ended up being rounded by accident. And I'm like, oh, it makes a bowl. What can I do with that? Because I didn't actually strive to do that. It was completely accidental <laughs> to be totally honest. But they're like, hey, I can work with that. I like it. Um, so yeah, try your ideas. Definitely try them. You never know what you will get. Something great will come of it. And go through the next super duo here. And then I'm going to pick up more tens. So it's just the same pattern, you know, that we did on that first side. But in, in this case, we're just borrowing the six. So now I'm back at this spot. And I'm thinking it's, if there's time, I can show you guys either putting the ball chain in now and stitching it closed, or I, well, actually, I've got this one to show you, so we'll see if there's time at the end. But I'm going to grab another ball chain. It is possible to get the chain through it once it's already made. But you'll probably end up using some pliers um, to do that. But another way to do it that I think is just a lot easier is to go ahead and put the chain in now. I'm just laying it in there. I'm gonna go through the six and go through the next super duo. And now I just continued through all those beads again, the, the ones that are next in, you know, in the row. And there you go, that's connected here. And we'll just keep going around. Um, yeah, and so uh, I saw Roxanne's question there about the 11s. Yeah, 11s will make it dome more. That's kind of my guess. I didn't try 11s yet, to be totally honest, but just looking at the structure here, what it would do is it would make all those beads pull together tighter, which is just going to make that dome taller. And you can try it and send a picture. I'd love to see how it comes out. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm going all the way around the piece again in the place where, um, you know, where I added the new side. Because if you can see from here, this is the top and you can see how tight that six is sitting in there, but it's really loose over here. The second pass will not only fix that, but it'll make the back dome up more so that it matches the front. So, and it'll get, it'll become sort of tight as you're pulling through but just go ahead and, you know, just if you need to use chain those pliers on the needle, that's okay. Okay, going through those. And I'm back where I started, the top. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Oops, oops oh, there we go. Go through one more super duo. 
And this was the top six again. I'm going to go through the six again. And now you can go through this side or this side. It doesn't matter. I'll probably go through this side. Exiting from a super duo. I'll pull through. And go under the thread here. Tie a knot. Go through the 10, the next super duo. And then the same thing, I'm gonna go under the thread, pull to there's a small loop, go through that loop, make a small knot. And do that one more time. And I know this knot will hold because almost impossible to get that needle through there. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go through that 10 and trim. And there you go. There's another stocking stuffer completed or birthday gift. You can make Halloween colors. I also had another idea with this design that would be kind of cool. And because, so here we're through the top, this is almost kind of like a guru bead. If you think about it, like you've got both sides here and then a single hole here at the bottom that you, you could pull something through. And so I didn't do that with this one, but if the chain came down here, you could hang a charm on it. You could also bring two cords through and have a tassel at the bottom. But yeah, it, it's versatile. It could become a great many things. It could even become a bracelet, make a bunch of them and then stack them like a bracelet. So I'd love to see what all of you guys make. It'd be really cool to see your ideas. Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey. A question you received from someone was, what would you charge if you had this in a craft show? Okay, so, um, so uh, depending on what country you're in, these tubes go for about between seven and eight dollars, I think. And these tubes, about four. So speaking in US dollars, you're Pricing should be about, I don't know, I usually have, I have a formula that I work my cost of packaging into and things like that, but um, at least three times what you paid in materials. Now, given that you can probably make a kabillion of these with these tubes of beads, like if you had just these four tubes, you could probably make, I don't even know how many, a lot. You could make a lot of these. Uh, they don't use very many super duos and there's, 22 grams in here. So, gosh, if I had to just throw a number out there, though, I would say 35 to 40 dollars probably for one of Thank these you. guys. The um, this this is another cost you'd have to take into account. It's what you spent on either your ball chain or your leather or whatever. Okay. Um, any uh, any other questions? No, you're doing great for time. So one of the questions you have is, would, would you do anything such as add two size 11 beads in each instead of um, the one? Like what would happen? Let me think about that. Um, so let's see, when we made the fans, and I made one without, I made one with 11s and I made one with 10s. Well, so two 11s would make this wider than 110. So it would be flatter. It would look a little bit flatter. It would still work. But instead of having it look like almost like a, a ball or a dome, it would be a little bit flatter. Thank you. And um, what if you wanted to make a bracelet? How would you connect three or four of these? What would be your thoughts? Let's see. Um, I would start with some bead stringing wire. That would be my first idea. And then I would put a rondelle between each one and a spacer some kind of spacer like a heishi or um, something six millimeter ish between each one and then string just beads on the side so it would be like say a pop of three of them maybe we do like one two and three with heishis and six millimeter rondelle in between each one and then rondelles out the side 
And someone would like to know the mixture of the 6O beads that you're using. What was the name again? Oh, this is beautiful. This is amber. And I have the, I have the SKU for it here. Let me get that for you guys. Um, it is, is Amber. It's okay. So if you type this into the app or the search engine on michaels.com, type in 106-27-185 and you'll get the Amber mix. Danielle, a couple people missed one of the series, one of the classes. So maybe you have just a few minutes left. Maybe you can just remind people um, what the first three classes were, what your final yeah. class is. And of course, they're all recorded to watch. They are, they're all recorded. Um, so we did a super duo fan necklace. This was last week. And then after class, um, I was finishing the samples as I, I like to finish the samples. I start here and I was just kind of playing. And I'm like, how cool. What if, what if we put the chain through the center? And then that somehow became a bracelet. <laughs> so it started as a necklace and then we decided, gosh, that's awesome. It's a bracelet. So you can find, if you go to michaels.com slash classes and you go through the video, you'll have to browse through the videos, but it was last Tuesday. Uh, you find that. And then in that YouTube feed, Michaels has posted both the PDFs, including the addendum we did to show the bracelet version. So there's two there. Um, and then we did earrings the week before that. So the Tuesday before last Tuesday, sorry, the dates have slipped my mind. But um, this is the earring. This is the triple decker fan version of our fan super duo earrings. Really fun design. There's a two stack version. And then the one that we taught in class was just a single fan. And this was a really fun one. There's been some really gorgeous designs posted by lots of students. That have so many gorgeous inspiration colors. So definitely, if you check out, uh, if you're on Instagram, look at the hashtag Make It With Michaels. People have been posting all of their very beautiful designs there, and you'll definitely get some color inspo. Um, again, this PDF and the class replay are on michaels.com/classes. And if you're free next Tuesday, we're going to do like the finale, which is the button bracelet. And everyone who took this class has an advantage because you've seen my trick for putting two pieces together. It's kind of the same thing. We're using different counts and we're not using any seed beads. We're using only super duos on that button. It's joined kind of the same way, but with putting super duo beads on the sides as the link. And then this bracelet is herringbone. And I'll show you guys how to do herringbone with super duo beads for a really neat kind of I guess almost like a stacked basket. Like it looks like a, a woven basket to me. And this pattern is optional. You can do just a solid color if you'd like to. I just used, this was the apricot mix and I liked the look of that. So I just kind of extrapolated out over it. That's, um, this class you'll need size eight and you will need one size six seed bead, two colors of super duos or one if you'd like and either some 11s or some 10s for the hoop here. You're getting many wonderful compliments, Danielle, on another great class. So I think, um, I think you've got a couple of students that are planning to make a necklace with possibly matching earrings. So oh, awesome. really look forward to seeing some of those samples online. And I see Loretta is holding up a finished one already. <laughs> that is awesome. That's so great. I can only see a few people at the top of my screen. I see my mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> And she's making one right now. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. And I see, I see um, Loretta's. Yep, that's awesome. And yeah, so next week. Um, oh, and um, Carmi, should I announce the October stuff? Yes. 
Yes, okay, so October, <laughs> we are doing Gift-tober. So everyone who would love to join us to make gifts for fall, for all the, you know, the holidays that come up at the end of the year, we're gonna do a bunch of classes. Um, and there's a video that's gonna be launching at, I think it's um, 7.15 Eastern. It's 4.15 my time, I'm in the Pacific time zone. Um, and one of the projects, I don't have them all in front of me, but one of the ones I have in front of me are these mandala earrings. So they're, I call them star flower mandalas. They're little infinity rounds. Really cool color combinations that you can do with that. And the other one I have in front of me is we're gonna do a peyote charm necklace. It should be really fun. And these are personalizable quick makes. Everything in this series is the theme, being able to personalize it and making it fast because this is the time of year when you want it to be fast, right? So yeah, I hope we'll see everybody back in um, next week for the button bracelet. And then of course, check out the October lineup and sign up for those. And thank you for being here today. Have fun creating. Happy creating, everybody. Thanks, Danielle.